everybody, Jeannie Young is back and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I am so excited, yet another day. Because today at the Young's house, Jeannie Young is gonna share with you all how easy it is to make delicious Cornish hens and acorn squash. This recipe right here, I tried to say something else, but we're gonna keep going. <laughs> this recipe right here is so amazing, so easy to make, doesn't require a lot of ingredients, and if you make it Jeannie Young style, it's gonna be so tasty. Here are the lovely ingredients you will need. First thing that you will need right here would be some beautiful Cornish hens that I have washed off with um, salt, cold water, and a little bit of lemon juice, and then we've pat it dry. You will need some beautiful vegetables, okay? I don't, um, let's see, you might be able to see. I have a red onion in there cut, and we have some lemon slices, okay? You're gonna need some bell pepper, that's what we have here. And also we're gonna need some acorn squash, that's what we have here, okay? Inside of this bamboo bowl, I have salt and pepper. We're gonna be using some curry. And also I have like a Jamaican seasoning here. We're gonna use some garlic powder, Mrs. Dash, Italian seasoning, poultry seasoning, a little bit of vegetable oil. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this really quick and simple, yet so tasty recipe. I couldn't be more excited to share with you all how easy it is to make delicious Cornish hens and the acorn squash. Now, the holidays is right around the corner and everybody is looking for that perfect dish to make for their holiday. I know the holiday is gonna be a little bit different for a lot of people this year and maybe has been different for the past couple years. You know, so I figured I wanted to come in and show you all what we can do with Cornish hens, especially if you are someone that maybe you're just cooking for yourself or maybe you're cooking for two people. Okay, so this, is, this would be perfect for you. So now I have washed this off using lemon juice, salt, and cold water, and then we've pat it dry. What we're gonna do, instead of cooking them whole, we're gonna spatchcock them, just like I would do my chicken. So now I wanna just bring them over here to the cutting board. I'm gonna show you how easy this does. This is the, or how, how easily this is done. This is the breast right here. You know you don't wanna cut on the breast, okay? And the leg part is up this way. But if you turn it over on the back side and you see where the tail would have been, what we're going to do, let me scoot this aside, is you can take kitchen shears or you can use a knife. And what we're gonna do is literally, you're gonna hold the tail. Now you don't want for your knife to go through the breast side. We're just trying to cut the back off. And I'm just using a paring knife, just a nice sharp knife. And I'm gonna cut the backbone pretty much out using the paring knife. If your paring knife is not strong enough, okay, then you're gonna use kitchen shears. So we got one side done, okay? I'm still holding the tail. And then I'm gonna go right along the other side to finish cutting the other side. And the back is pretty much out, okay? So now, I'll turn it around here in one second and you guys can really see what just happened here, okay? All right, you can use this backbone here to make a beautiful broth if you want to, that would be great flavor, or you can just toss it, okay? So now this is what we have, all right? Now I'm gonna flip it over this way, and there is a breastbone right here that I want to crack. So I'm just gonna do a number like this, and you may hear it, you may not, okay? I just heard it. I just cracked the breastbone so this can lay nice and flat. Now we're gonna take the wings and we're gonna put the wings behind itself to where you can see the wing tips are back there so it doesn't look like it's flying away. And this is how it's gonna sit into our baking dish, okay? I'll do the other one off camera, and when I come back, I'm gonna show you how I like to season these, and then we're gonna get them in the oven. So now the first thing that I wanna do after you get your Cornish hens nice and sliced, and you have them laying flat, let's take some oil, and we're gonna oil the front and the underneath side, get in all the nooks and crannies, and the oil is going to help for your spices to adhere, but not only is the oil gonna do that, 
but it'll also uh, assure that you have a nice, juicy, and beautifully golden brown Cornish hen, just like so. Give me a second and I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. So now that I have oil all on the underneath side, we're gonna season just like so, the underneath side in all the nooks and crannies. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the top side. I do have my oven preheated to 355 degrees and we're gonna cook these babies until they are golden brown, gorgeous, juicy. They're gonna turn out so flavorful because we chose to use great seasonings here. Now, uh, when I first started the video, this seasoning right here, I said it was a Jamaican seasoning. It's not, it's a Caribbean all-purpose seasoning, okay? So that's what that is. I just wanted to correct myself, so sorry about that. This is a no salt seasoning here, Mrs. Dash. There's so many great flavors in here and there's no salt. So you don't have to feel guilty about using that seasoning. We're gonna go in with some uh, poultry seasoning. Now the poultry seasoning will only be used for this underneath side, okay? And then we're gonna go in, same thing with some garlic powder. Don't be shy with the garlic powder beautiful and then this all-purpose seasoning this all-purpose seasoning does have salt in it if you cannot find this all-purpose caribbean seasoning feel free to just use some salt or some chicken powder okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn these babies over just like so okay and before i touch my spices i need to wash my hands so i don't transfer this bacteria that's on my hands to my spices we're going to oil the top side and then we're going to season it once again now i did not put my salt and pepper on the underneath side but when the camera was off i salt and peppered the underneath side okay so let's do that right now to the top side the top side has already been nice and oiled let's get some salt and pepper on there just like so great flavor here it's nice and oiled up. Our oven is preheated. All right, we're gonna go in with all the same seasonings that we use on the other side, except we're not gonna put the poultry seasoning on the top. I feel like sometimes the poultry seasoning can burn a little bit, okay? So now let's get it nice and seasoned. And when I come back, we're gonna chop up those bell peppers because the bell peppers are gonna go to the bottom of our pan. Um, so, this beautiful poultry can soak up the flavor of the bell peppers and the onion and also the lemon when I come back. So now I'm going to be using a 12 by 9 disposable baking dish. This is it right here. Feel free to use any baking dish that you love, okay? So now, no special way to cut the bell peppers. It doesn't have to be red and green bell pepper that you decide to use. Let's get this out of the way. I'm just using the red and green really for color, but believe it or not, each bell pepper, the different colors, has different flavors. So I want you to think about that when you think about adding flavor to your poultry, okay? All right, so here's how it's done. <clears throat> We're just gonna slice it, nothing special, okay? Just slice it up just like so. Let's get that piece off of there. And where is this going to go? Well, this is going to go in the bottom of the pan and it's going to let off, it's going to, these veggies are going to roast in all of that beautiful Cornish hen juice that the Cornish hen will let off. Okay. And like I said, they're going to have like amazing flavor because the spices from the Cornish hen kind of goes down into the bell peppers as well. Okay. So let's get those there and they let off beautiful flavor into the flesh of your Cornish hen. I got two lemons here. Let's put the lemon there. I may set the Cornish hens right on top of that lemon because the lemon's gonna let off beautiful flavor. And then as well, same thing with the uh, onions here. They're gonna roast and let off so much flavor into your pan and into your Cornish hens. So let's take our seasoned Cornish hens and we're gonna lay them right on top just like so. How about that? Pretty simple, right? That's because everything that Gina Young shares with you all is gonna be simple and doggone it, it's gonna taste good. We will put a half a cup of water, or you could use chicken broth if you want, into here. We are not gonna cover this. If you decided that you wanted to cover it, it's not gonna work out. 
It's not going to get crispy. It's not going to be beautiful and juicy. It'll be dull looking and the skin will never get crispy. Don't cover it. 355 degrees. Put a half a cup of water in here. When I come back, we'll get started on acorn squash. Cornish hens are in the oven. And now I'm going to show you all how to make a curried um, acorn squash. You can do this with butternut squash as well. Here's how the acorn squash is uh, prepared. So what we need to do, see, because it's kind of rolly. And what I like to do is I want to cut off this end and this end so we can be have it stable. Okay, so I'm going to really be careful as I can. Okay, so I can make a flat surface. Look at that. And now I feel more comfortable with it. See how it's not as flimsy or rolly, whatever you want to say. Okay, just like so. Pretty simple, right? And then we're going to come through here. All right. And give it a nice whack. Open that baby up and guess what happens next? What are those? There are seeds in there. Okay, and if you take a spoon, you can core it all out. Okay, core it out, get rid of the fibrous parts, the little stringy stuff. <laughs> all right, there's little seeds in there. Oh, you know, it kind of reminds you of when you're carving a pumpkin. Okay, so that's what it reminds you of, and it smells beautiful when you cut into it. Okay, there's a lot of people I feel like has never tasted butternut squash or acorn squash. And listen here, I'm telling you, you never tasted it before, you are missing out. And I love that it's budget friendly. They are so cheap and they're so delicious. Okay, so now that we have the insides out, let's go ahead and cut into this. Here's how it's done. All right, nothing special, nothing fancy. Don't cut them too thin, don't cut them too thick. All right, and these are going to go on the other rack in the oven and they're going to bake up and roast and they have amazing flavor. OK, so you see how I did that. Um, I'll do the rest off camera and when I come back, I'm going to show you how to season them. We're going to get them into the oven the same temperature until they're nice and roasted and they taste so good. So now let's get to the butternut squash. You can see in my pan here that everything's nice and sliced up. And honestly, you leave the skin on. It has nutrients and it's delicious and it's soft and supple. So now I do want to uh, tell you that this is new oil. This is not the same oil that I was using for the chicken. OK, this is a new cup as well. So now let's coat it. Coat it in with some oil. This is a vegetable oil that I'm using. Use any kind of oil, but I don't really suggest using a olive oil because we all know olive oil burns at a high temperature, okay? So once we get the top part nice, uh -uh, uh -uh. hold on guys. So now that I have enough oil on here, I'm just gonna kind of mix them up so the other side of the butternut squash gets nice and oiled as well. But then I wanna go in with seasoning with salt and pepper and curry powder. And this right here, I'll put it in my hand. This right here is so beautiful because the, if I said butternut squash, you all know what it is, it's acorn squash, all right? So now, the acorn squash has a beautiful sweet taste, right? And then we put the salt and pepper on it. And then you put curry powder on it. And listen here, you have a match made in heaven. You got to try this. I'm going to season the other side. This is going to go in the oven and roast until it's kind of like golden brown and nice and soft. Seasoned on both sides. Throw you a little bit of curry powder on just like so in this manner. You don't have to get crazy with the curry powder and you don't have to season both sides, okay? Just that little bit is gonna give you that aroma and that great smell. Going in the oven, 355 degrees until, like I said, it's gonna get beautiful. When I come back, I'm gonna say an amazing prayer. You all get that first bite. Okay, everyone, our Cornish hens are done and they are beautiful. The house smells amazing, check this out. And look down in there, you got roasted veggies and a beautiful broth there. Look at that. And that broth, if you wanted to, if it was the holiday, you would just take that broth and make up a nice pot of dressing. It, absolutely, you could. Great flavor there. And then take a look. Take a look at the butternut squash here now. Or not butternut squash, acorn squash. But remember, you can do butternut squash the same way. And so, look at this. Oh, my goodness so tasty and so beautiful listen here everybody if y'all enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed make sure you subscribe 
tell your family and friends, and everyone you know, tell the whole world about Gina Young, what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. Let's go ahead and say a prayer. Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you once again for a beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for your love time, your mercy, and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. Send your angels to surround us day and night. Your Holy Spirit to help us make good decisions. Give us peace over our minds in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, once again for this beautiful meal. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again to my beautiful prayer. I'm going to taste the acorn squash because, honestly, that chicken is piping hot. And look how you can just cut right through it. Oh, oh, oh. ooh. A lot of people think the acorn squash, it's so little, so cute and little. They use it for, you know, decoration during Thanksgiving and Halloween and stuff like this. This is not a decoration. This is delicious, and you need to try some. Gina Young style. I'm going in. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm. Mm. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you all for watching. Mm, that's so good. Good night.